and welcome to another episode of Hereford FC on Vanilla FM. And today we're going to take a look at the end of the season 2036-2037. We're going to play the FA Cup final against Southampton at Wembley. Uh, but before we do, let's take a look at how the season went. We finished second, um, just a point difference there between us and Tottenham. Quite sad, really, because we basically we just had a bad run uh, for three games. Uh, lost against Man City, lost against Chelsea, which you know it, it's not really surprising those two, but this one was a draw with Bet Brentford. We finished tenth at the end. Was not expecting to draw with them, um, and that made the whole difference. That if we had won those two extra points would have given us the championship. So, uh, we were nearly there. Nearly there. We also lost uh, against Barcelona for the semi-final Champions League. Um, I think the second leg we lost 2-0, which lost us the, um, um, in the semi-final. They're going to play the final against Borussia Dortmund. So, it's okay. We, we, I mean, we got to the semi-final. It's pretty good, right? Uh, a while back, we also lost the Carabao Cup to Tottenham. Uh, so it looks like Tottenham has been our arch rival uh, all this time, this season. Before I get any further, let me just quickly check on our sponsor, Nugent. Remember, if you want to sponsor the channel, one of the ways you can do that is by sponsoring a Nugent. You can go to Patreon to figure out how to do that. But yeah, so the sponsor Nugent that we have at the moment, um, he's doing okay. Paris Saint-Germain has been there for a couple of seasons. He had a busier season this year, but didn't do as well as last year. But I think he's got time. He's only 25. Uh, yeah, so if you want to sponsor a Nugent, I always pick either, depending on your subscription, either from the youth or from the senior squad. And um, change your name to something that alludes to your name. And then we'll follow the story of that Nugent as the game progresses. Uh, let me just talk about scouting as well, because one of you has asked, how do you do your scouting? So, I always control the scouting assignments myself, manually. And I always give one assignment per scout. So, you know when you go to here and create a focus, I always select a scout manually. And as you can see, I only give one assignment per scout. I also set the scout's priority to ongoing, so as long as that scout is with us, they are, they will continually um, scout that... Oh, gosh, I just hit my knee underneath the desk and that really hurt. <laughs> oh, oh, my God. Okay, uh, yeah, so ongoing is um, the priority that I give it. It's not really a priority, I wouldn't say. Uh, oh, hang on. Uh, top priority, minimum two scouts to be working on focus for quicker results. Okay. Uh, yeah, anyways, so I always set it to ongoing. And then, as far as the areas, it, this depends on your budget and how wide your um, scouting range is. So when, you start, when I did this save, Obviously, I started with very, very limited resources. So I think uh, uh, the beginning, I could only really scout within the UK. Um, so I always set one scout to any. So that just defaults to the biggest thing you can scout in your... Sort of like the, the, um, the entirety of your scope. So in this case, if I set it to any, which I have for one of my scouts, it will show... One of these guys is going to have world. Where is it? Oh, apparently not. Okay. I must have forgotten to do that. One of them is meant to be on world, but I forgot to do that. Okay, something to fix for the next one. Next season. Um, Yeah, so one of them on world. And then, and then when I started, I think I only had the region of UK and Ireland. Um... So, so I, I just did that, UK and Ireland, and then had someone on England, 
and occasionally, so I always try and hire as many scouts as possible. So I think eventually, initially I only had three scouts, I think, but then eventually I got more. So I put one on Wales, one on Scotland, one on Northern Ireland, Ireland, and so on. Uh, yeah, but when when you start getting more scouts, I like having one on World, which I obviously didn't do at the moment. I'm not doing it at the moment because I forgot. But what one on world, one on each of the continents. At the moment, my budget is declined to just Europe, but I have all of the regions unlocked, as you can see from the assignments. And then one on every single region. And at the moment, I have all of the regions of the world unlocked. So I've got one on each continent and one on each region of the world, except I didn't have enough scouts for. What am I doing? I didn't have enough scouts to get one in North um, South America, there, where my mouse is. And I didn't have enough scouts to scout uh, Oceania as a region, but I am scouting it as a continent, just not as a region. Which doesn't really matter. As you can tell, I, I've got knowledge everywhere in the world. All the scoutable areas, I mean, Greenland isn't scoutable. Uh, I don't know where that country is and that there. Uh, but yeah, they're not scoutable either. Um, one place I've struggled to scout is East Africa. For some reason, the game doesn't have a lot of... Um, uh, how do I look at this? Um, no, shortlist. Scouted players? No. Where is it? Oh, there we go. Focus. And if I go to Eastern Europe, Eastern Africa, no players have been found. I think this is the only bit in the game that I've not been able to find players. There we go. There's an all. So there must be someone scouting the world. Hmm. Recruitment analyst. And a scout. Okay, fine. Yeah, anyway. Uh, Europe. Yeah, all of them except. Oh, Asia is quite sparse as well. Yeah. Northern Europe, quite sparse. North America. South. Southeastern Europe. East Asia, only one, one player. North America, only one player. Africa as a continent, only one player, really? <laughs> South Asia, no players. Oceania, no players. Caribbean, no players. North America, Central, no players. Central Asia, no players. Wow. A lot of these have no players in them. No players that are recommended. Some of these have players in progress, though. Which I guess is better than nothing. I don't know what a near miss means. Yeah, so that is my strategy for scouting. Just spread your scouts far and wide, see if they can find any players. And some of them will be gems. Um, I've been able to find... I guess it's easy for, that, for South America, but I've been able to find some South American players quite cheaply. Um, very good players. And... Um, yeah. Anyway, let's jump into the match and let's carry on from there. Now, let's talk about FM25, shall we? Um, so the game is delayed until March. I'm guessing mid-March. Um, and um, yeah, so so we're not going to have a game in November, as promised. Um, a bit of a bummer because I already booked some time off in November, um, but it's okay. Um, I'm not gonna jump on the um, criticizing train, I guess, because um, I, like, I could sort of tell from the articles that SI was putting out that they weren't really pleased to be putting out a game right now. You could tell all the articles had a tiny bit of a negative uh, twinge to it. So I think 
obviously they had their hand forced by Sega to put out something that could captivate uh, pre-orders just to get a little bit of an income stream coming in uh, which sucks you know it's not not great it's not really how to tr- to to build a a community that uh, how to treat a community that's been so loyal it's a little bit of you know it really sucks on all on all levels but i don't think that was really i don't think that would have been si's um way of working if if they were independent anyway i am excited to play the game even if it's delayed and i pre-ordered it already um and i'm not gonna get a refund i'm gonna stick with my pre-order and um i am gonna play it when it comes out in march i'm guessing the beta will come out the beta has been promised as well um so i'm guessing that will come out either at the end of feb or the first week of march so i'll be playing it uh yeah that's all i've got to say about that uh also i've been toying with the idea of maybe doing a how-to guide for it when they come when it comes out i think i might do a practice run by preparing a how-to guide video with different sections for FM24. Obviously, I know the game is old already and people know how to play it. But I'm guess I'm I'm just thinking if I do one for FM24, then I'll you know, I think I'll be better prepared to make one for FM25. So I might just do it as a dry run. And um that way when FM25 comes out, I'll have an idea of what is the best way to do that kind of thing. Oh, okay, good. Um, our striker, Valentino Torres, has been out of action for the last two or three months. He's only just come back recently. Uh, he scored two goals in the last game. But, yeah, so it's a bit of a bummer, really, because he was on course to be goal scorer of the season before he went on injury but obviously he fell so far for so far behind being away for so long missing so many matches that he lost out on that and um, ended up being third which is okay I guess but um, yeah Our backup striker Gordon Joseph has been doing really well actually especially in the European competitions. Um, and he was named third wonder kid of the world. Um, so that is really good. We'll try and keep him on for next season. Um, Ikea, so I have Gordon Joseph as a player that grew up in our academy. He was promoted from within. Uh, from our under-18 squad straight to the senior. Uh, and the reason for that is to meet the European competition criteria, uh, the registration criteria, we need to have at least one homegrown player from our club. And I picked Gordon Joseph because he was our best new junior at the time. And he's done well for himself. So I'm happy that hopefully we can keep him on for next season if no one else better comes along. Um, yeah, so so we missed out on a bunch of titles this season. Obviously, we won at the beginning of the season a few titles. We won Community Shield. We won the um, uh, South American Challenge. We won the Super Cup, which is really important, actually. Uh, but we didn't win the Carabao Cup, we didn't get any further with the European Champions League. But here we are, receiving the FA Cup. And I'm going to take a couple of screenshots like I always do. Uh, but yeah, we lifted one trophy at the end of this season, which is really good. We missed out narrowly on the Champions, uh, Premier League Champions. But... We'll be here next season, even better, with more money in the coffers, hopefully. Hopefully, 
Here we go, screenshot time. Very nice. Yeah, so, um, yeah, we, we've already got, got in the, um, in the bank the, um, money from the league, which I think is 36 million, which put, puts us in positive 13? Or we must have won something else. What we won? 2 million. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, so it puts, we've got money in the coffers. Uh huh, uh huh, uh huh. Bum, 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 bum. Let's look at the vision. Yeah, obviously we missed out on that. Uh, but that's okay. Supporters. Uh, yeah, they seem to be happy with us. Finance wise, I'm, I'm gonna look at the budget 20 million for next year. Which isn't great, really. Last season we had more, I think. Uh, let me see if I can release some of the loanies. We can't. I always like doing that to um, uh, relieve some of the pressure on finances. But okay, um, right. So we got one trophy. Let's work. We have loads of time now to play FM24, as we just discussed. So I'm going to carry on till next summer. Do some transfers. Prepare the. the um, um, wow, so much silverware. Prepare the squad for what's coming. And, um, yeah. We'll need to have a look at... At getting our hands on a trophy next year on the Premier League. <laughs> Fantastic, we lost a little bit on broadcast. Because, oh, I don't know actually why we lost that much on broadcast. But it's okay. 11 million. I think that's more than last year. Uh, lots of money from prizes. Uh, record breakers. Most goals in a match. Four goals for Gordon Joseph. Most assists. 18. In the, in the league. Most match awards. Ben Hames again with 10. Worst discipline. 11 yellow cards and one red card. Bless him. Highest transfer fee paid. 35 million for Valentino Torres. He's a good one though. No competition awards. Fan player of the season. Ben Hames. Yeah, he's done well this season. Younger player of the season. Kenny Lawless. Yeah, I think he might be our... Um, new gen next um, captain next year. He's our vice captain now. He wasn't named in the Wonder Kid list because he's 20 now. I think if he had been 19, he probably would have been at the top of that list because he's way better than Gordon Joseph. Uh, signing of the season, our goalkeeper Owen Goodman. He did a really good job, even playing the majority of the games as opposed to Diego Zupo, who's supposed to be our main keeper. Uh, goal of the season. Gareth, Gareth Jones, top goal scorer, 25 goals overall for Valentino Torres. Yeah, we already spoke about those. There we go. Uh, very good, very good. A lot of these people have gone. Actually, technically, he's still with us. He's on loan. But yeah. Ben Hames, he's not with us anymore. Riley Owen. Playing for Luton. He's no, not with us either. Uh, neither is he. Um, neither is DJ. Uh, or he, he's a bit tired. Dickinson must be retired too. He's a manager. Okay. Pa pa pa. Support. Oh my god. Nearly 9 million. 9 million supporters. They want us to record a top half finish. Well, we did that this year already. So this is what I'm worried about. We're losing hardcore and we're gaining family. Family, actually, that's not so bad, I guess. What's bad is if when we start losing and gaining them down here in fair weather and casual. So at the moment, we still have more than half favorable sort of um, profiles which is good 
Right, I'll leave it there. And um, we'll um, catch up again after the break. After the summer break. Increase commercial revenue. Oh. Yeah, that's important. Ah, challenging domestic cup. Oh, we can do that. We can do that. And oh, we can do that. We can do that. I always try and uh, reduce everything that I can. So we're going to be forced to play counter attack. Well, we already do that. Increase the commercial revenue. I feel like that's a little bit out of our hands, but okay. Challenge. So next season, challenge. No, in a couple seasons, we need to challenge in domestic cup competitions. Well, we already we already do that. Win a domestic competition the year after, and qualify for the Europa League in, the, in four in five years. We can do all of that. We're already doing all of that, so that's okay. Right, I'll leave it there because the rest of it is a little bit boring. Where are we going on holiday? Singapore? Fine. Um, yeah, so thanks so much for watching till the end, and I'll catch up with you again in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.